Hello, my name is Sasa Ivonen, and in this video, we'll have a look on what's coming within the SharePoint Framework 1.10 release. Um, we've been covering this, uh, this functionality a few times in a different community calls or in Ignite, but some of the recording, unfortunately, have been failed. So therefore, we are releasing a separate video. So you can quickly have a look on what's coming in 1.10 within a real demos and walking through the different scenarios uh, on the preview or upcoming uh, capabilities. Now, SharePoint Framework 1.10 uh, is coming within an upcoming weeks. Uh, it is currently 20th of November, uh, so it's going to take a while to get it out. Uh, you might be watching this video later on when the SharePoint Framework 1.10 is already out, uh, but then you'll also know what was actually part of the 1.10 release. Now, as part of the, the messaging uh, within the Ignite 2019 uh, and also on the other conferences is that we've been telling that in 1.10 and these are the features which we are releasing. So 1.10 will have an extensions for uh, add-on capabilities for extensions, which is pre-allocated placeholders. So you're able to reduce the flickering, so to say, on the screen uh, when the top placeholder holder, as an example, is being rendered. And we're going to do a live demo on that one so you'll know what that actually means. We can also release a SharePoint framework for Teams uh, area, uh, new capabilities. So personal app support is coming as 1.10 release. So um, you can then have uh, SharePoint framework implement that not Teams tab, but rather personal applications uh, implemented using SharePoint Framework. And then uh, support for mobile apps. So the SharePoint Framework uh, implementations will be working in, in the Teams mobile app as well. So you can actually use those uh, in the mobile app. List notification API moved to GA. Uh, so this means that uh, the web part can self and modify or subscribe to events uh, in lists and libraries. And then when an event happens, it can dynamically change its status, uh, which means that even though the, the screen would be, you leave the screen open or a portal front page open, it can actually modify itself based on new items on a list level. So really cool capability as well. Uh, preview features in 1.10 uh, new extensions, query suggestions. This means that the SharePoint framework uh, will be actually the way to extend and customize also Microsoft Search. And uh, this is really around uh, modifying the query suggestions. So just before we're executing the query, against uh, Microsoft Search uh, corpus, uh, you can actually modify that query. So you're able to inject additional terms, additional things um, as part of that execution. We're going to see that alive uh, in the upcoming demos as well. And then a, a really cool preview uh, preview feature as well is the SharePoint framework for Office. And uh, we'll start with an Office uh, uh, Outlook web access support. And then it's kind of land on the Office, other Office clients relatively soon as well. So within the upcoming features. But starting from 1.10, you can actually build Outlook web access uh, extensibility using SharePoint framework with automatic hosting and deployments and all of that stuff, which are the good, good things and what we have in SharePoint framework site. So let's have a look on all of this uh, in actually in practice. So let me jump to a screen here and a sample tenant uh, where we're going to demonstrate the feature. So let's start with that um, extension, a pre-allocated uh, extension uh, functionality. So in here, you can actually see that I have a, a top header extent, the top hex extension here, which is adding additional links related on this group associated uh, theme site. When I download the page, you can or cannot, uh, it really depends on, can you actually spot that? You can see that the page actually moves quite a lot. Um, so we basically, as part of the downloading, as a final basis, whenever we are actually injecting this functionality on the top header, we actually move the page slightly. Um, so we, we kind of at the page moves now are roughly 50, 50 pixels down. And obviously it's not a massively visible in this case because it's only 50 pixels. But if, if it would be a larger space, um, it, the page would actually jump down on the screen. Now, when you use um, the pre-allocated uh, placeholders, you can actually see this one is the one with where you can actually see the movement. There we go. So now if you are watching, I will refresh the page. You can see that that header section and the suit navigation in top, let me actually zoom in. This one uh, and this section are first visible. And then all of a sudden, this section is being extended on the middle of it. And this is quite annoying. Um, and there's a lot of ISVs who've been asking that we have to fix that. And now we're actually adding that capability. So this one is the fixed one. So you can see that the gray area is actually there automatically when I refresh the page. So it doesn't, the header section in here doesn't actually get moved down. If I do the same in this page, we can actually see that it's, oops, and we can actually see 
that it's actually moving uh, up and down. So let me actually do try this one. And then if we do an F5, you can actually see that the Contoso group two is right next to the top header, but then suddenly that uh, appears on the middle. There we go, you can see that movement. Now, if we do the same uh, on the fixed one, so let me actually zoom again in here and do an F5, you can actually see that the movement and the locking of the height is all the time there. So the header, the SharePoint header, which is this section in here, is never right next to the suit navigation, which is in top. So there is no movement of the header and the whole page, which then helps on the, on the optimal experience for the end users. Not a massively, let's say, not a huge demand capability, uh, but I, a lot of ISPs have been requesting this. And you can actually set this in a an extension by extension level. Um, so it will be actually available. Uh, as a host properties in a custom action object, um, and you're able to then pre-allocate um, the, the height of the head, top head section and the bottom section in the host properties. And obviously, this will be something what we're bringing into the new other UI extensions in the future as well, so we're able to take advantage of this. So the host properties object, our property is getting added on the custom action property. You can either control that from the centralized tenant-wide extension list, or if you are <clears throat> one by one installing your extensions, you can actually define those in the properties uh, of the extension, what is getting installed on the site level. Good. Um, the next one what I wanted, wanted to quickly demo uh, is simply the, the SharePoint framework uh, web parts exposed as a personal apps in the team in the Microsoft Teams. So sure, as part of the, the 1. Uh, was it 6 version, uh, we already started supporting implementing SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Teams tabs using the SharePoint framework technology. So you can absolutely extend or expose the same functionality as a web part or as a Microsoft Teams tabs. Automatically hosted, automatically using DNS, uh, automatically optimized, or the automatically all the operations and everything else is automatically happening. So you don't have to worry about setting up an Azure application, hosting and approvals, of permissions and all of that, that's all taken care of, which is absolutely the beauty and the, the advantages of using SharePoint Framework. Now, starting from 1.10 version, you can now have also uh, a personal applications uh, implemented using SharePoint Framework. So this leads application in here is being also exposed as a personal application in the personal context. So it's a human or persona-based context rather than inside of a Teams channel as a tab. Um, so this is an option, and it will be a new attribute in the host uh, hosted uh, hosted platform setting in the web part manifest. So you can you can define the same web part to be a web part, an application page, uh, uh, Teams tabs, or Teams tab, or channel tab, or a personal tab in Teams as well. Now we will introduce a fourth and fifth option there as well, which is related on then the Office add-ins. So as part of the 1.10, we'll go to preview with Outlook Web Access support for SharePoint Framework. And what that means is that whenever you need to extend the Outlook experience, for example, in your enterprise, you can take advantage again on the same tooling, same automatic hosting, same approved simplified deployment and operations which we provide through SharePoint Framework. Now, if I click a new message, uh, we have a simple, relatively simple ex implementation here with a SharePoint Framework extension which will connect uh, to an existing SharePoint site. So I could modify that one. We could obviously get the list of sites uh, which person has presently um, gone through because all of the, the REST API access to graph access, everything else is, is available in here. And you get directly, directly access uh, on the SharePoint behind of the scenes as well. Now, in this case, it's a relatively simple extension, like mentioned. Uh, it's a panel extension on the right side, and it's basically there for to be able to attach uh, individual files, individual uh, attachments uh, from an existing SharePoint site. So you have full access on the SharePoint REST APIs or Microsoft Craft APIs, even better, uh, or, or whatever uh, you need to in the context of the user again. So you can e really easily implement this enterprise extensibility for Outlook Web Access. And um, again, it comes to preview. It will be only on preview in 1.10, but then quite fast, hopefully getting to the GA, depending on your findings and your feedback as well. 
Now, the last thing uh, what I'm going to uh, preview uh, or show as well uh, is the custom extension query suggestions. Uh, so this is a big thing, uh, obviously. So Microsoft Search, uh, it is no longer Search, it's no longer part of SharePoint. It is actually Microsoft Search, and it's, it's kind of elevated on the top level of the search navigation. So it doesn't matter if you are in, in Outlook or you are in SharePoint or you are in Teams, you can actually find this Microsoft Search in the same location. Now, so how do we then build extensibility for Microsoft Search. It, it has a, a really awesome previewed uh, or beta version of Microsoft Graph API, so you can query stuff there as well. But then the UI layer extensibility of Microsoft Search uh, will be done using SharePoint Framework as well. So in this case, uh, we'll start with the with, uh, query suggestions extension, uh, which is basically demonstrated in here. So I'm kind of search uh, query, uh, my query is revenue, but uh, before my search is getting executed or thrown to the APIs of the Microsoft Search, we are actually adding two different translations of the revenue, one in, in Spanish and one in uh, Turkish, uh, the, the query. So we actually sent three different queries uh, against the corpus or the index, and then we got the results where all of those three different uh, values are getting actually included. Quite simple extension. Um, basic idea is that as part of the execution of your query, we can modify the query uh, in any way you want. You could target based on profile, you can target based on roles, organizations, uh, whatever is your business scenario. A quite simple thing, like mentioned, but this is a start of adding then a UX extensibility also for Microsoft Search using SharePoint Framework. Now, Related on that one, related on the fact that we are using SharePoint Framework, obviously, uh, for, for extending uh, Outlook, we're using SharePoint Framework for extending Microsoft Teams, we're using SharePoint Framework, obviously, for extending SharePoint, um, and Microsoft Search. Uh, we are looking into renaming SharePoint Framework. We talked about this quite openly in the Microsoft uh, Ignite 2019. Um, and we talked about, uh, it, we released blog posts where we called it Yo Microsoft 365, and the, the exact naming, everything else will be defined uh, within the spring 2020, 2020 um, whenever the final decisions on that has been done. But really the key point here is that the SharePoint framework, the underlying, uh, underlying functionality of SharePoint framework, the simple automated hosting, deployment, operations, permissions, and all of that will be available across the Microsoft 365 uh, stack or Office 365 stack. So it doesn't, if you're building your end enterprise extensibility, Across any of these applications, you can take advantage of the same tooling rather than having a different ways of extending all of these services in a, in a well, which which requires then a different skill sets. So one skill set, one tooling, one consistent way, industry standards, open source uh, uh, supported capabilities. So everything can be implemented using the same topics. But that's it for now. Uh, so that was a quick uh, intro on the what's coming in the SharePoint framework 1.10, uh, 12 minutes or 13 minutes uh, roughly. Um, there might be still some last minute changes on this, um, but we are looking into documenting obviously all of this available for you. So whenever 1.10 comes out, there will be tutorials and samples available so you can take advantage of these new capabilities. And please, please, please remember your feedback has a crucial impact on what are we gonna do next. Uh, so what is, what's working, what doesn't work, what do you want and what do you need for your business uh, and uh, extensibility, please let us know using the different channels what we have available in social media. So we're able to prioritize our actions and our investments based on your requirements. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.